Good morning, my wonderful students. I'm happy to be here. And I know you are all glad to see me from your various home. How I have missed you. I've missed you so much. You know I missed you. And I know you two are missing me. I hope you are all keeping safe. We are washing our hands regularly and we are using our hand sanitizer. Stay indoors. And if you must go out, please ensure you max up. That is, and you use your nose mask. I remain your sincerely, Mrs. Ayewole Alaba Adekweju. For the purpose of today's learning, we are going to be talking about revisions of our last term topic or the first term topic, just because of your oncoming examination work. Please, the topic I'm going to start with today is sense organ. And I'm choosing that topic first because I noticed there's no year that questions don't come out from sense organ, either in the objective theory or practicals. Like last year exam, it was the skin that came out on their practicals. So I'll be starting this revision class with the sense organ. And under the sense organ, we are going to be treating the nose, the skin, and the tongue. That is what we are going to be talking about today. The skin, the nose, and the tongue. But before we proceed, let's see the learning objectives. At the end of this class, at the end of this revision, the revision class, you must be able to tell me the functions of the skin, the nose, and the tongue. Also, you must be able to say something about diseases that affect the skin, the nose, and the tongue, and few ways in which we can take care of our skin, our nose, and our tongue. And most importantly, you must be able to lab, draw and label the structure of the skin, the nose and the tongue. Firstly, let's see the skin. The skin is one of the body's sensory organs. It responds to touch, pain, pressure, and temperature. The human skin consists of two main layers. That is, on our skin, we have two main layers. The first one is the epidermis. The epidermis is the first layer of the skin. It is usually very thick, and in some places it is thinner. That is, the epidermis, in the, which is the first layer, part of it may be thick, while in some places it is thinner. Our heels, the sole of our feet, our elbow, and the palms of our hand tend to be thicker, while other parts of our skin are thinner. The outermost layer of the dermis is also known as conifold layer which is made up of dead cells, which make the skin waterproof due to the keratin deposit. The maflinglia layer is where cells divide and produce new cells. It contains melanin, which gives the skin its color, and it also absorbs ultraviolet light from the sun. That is why we have been advised not to expose ourselves to sunlight on a regular basis or too much because it can burn our skin. That is how, where you see that some people have a face burn. It is due to the too much exposure of our melanin to sun ray. The second part of the skin is what we know to be the dermis. The dermis is the second layer of the skin. It is thicker and it consists of connective tissue. The dermis contains blood capillaries sweat gland, sensory nerves ending, and receptors, even if they have ear follicles and sebaceous gland. These are the composition of the dermis. Let's see the graphical representation of the skin. This is the, what the skin look like under a high electron microscope. From here, you can see our ear follicle. You can see the sweat gland. You can see where fats are being deposited. This is the connective tissue. We have the blood vessels, and this is epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis. This is what the structure of our skin looks like under an electron microscope. Now, let's go to the functions and diseases of the skin. Our skin serves the following functions. One, it serves as protection against harmful microorganisms by the conified layer and the melanin, which prevents damage from the ultraviolet rays. 
Its function also, it helps to maintain temperature regulation. The skin also helps to excrete sweat, which contains excess salt, water, and urea. And the skin is very sensitive. Like I said earlier on, our skin is the most sensitive part of our body. There are many diseases or disorders of the skin, which are caused by either virus, fungi, or due to our weak immune system, and it affects human body. Examples are eczemas, moles, singles, leprosy, ache, ache, ice, ring one, apes, or fever blister. Fever blister is always noticed at the extreme end of our lips. It shows symptoms of fever that, oh, this person is having temperature, is, or is it, is he or she is likely to fall sick of fever. We have ring warm. Ring warm is, it affects any part of your skin. It might be on your head, your hand, your leg, any part of your skin. It's a circle like infection. That is why it is called ring warm. We have ache. Ache usually happens on our faces, where you see black head, pimples, and the rest. Leprosy is a very bad disease of the skin. That once somebody is detected to have leprosy, he or she is not fit to live around where human beings. They always put them in a far place, most of the time in the forest or bush somewhere else. Then we have moles. You notice that one is like a, a, a skin tank on, our, on, any, on any part of the skin, especially on the face. Then eczema too. We can notice that one on the face. These are many more are all diseases of the skin. How do we take care of our skin? Our skin needs proper care and attention because of so many reasons, like you want to glow, you want to remain ever young, you need to take absolute care of your skin. The first thing you must do to your skin to keep you in good shape and order is you must bathe regularly with soap and water. Once is not enough to care for the skin. You can bathe in the morning and you can also have your bed in the night before you sleep with soap and water. Secondly, there should be sufficient exposure to sunlight during the day, especially in the morning. Your skin must be exposed to sunlight but not too much because it can damage our melanin. Thirdly, it is important to treat and clean any abrasion or wound immediately to avoid infection and microorganism from getting into the tissue. Once you notice any wound on your skin surface, it is advisable that you treat it very well, either with cream or tablets or injection, in whichever case it may be, to avoid infection or my people microorganism entering the tissue. Thirdly, fourthly, you must eat a well-balanced diet and drink enough water. You must eat good food. Not that you will eat rice in the morning, gari in the afternoon, eba at night. You know, all, are all carbohydrates. You must eat a well-balanced diet. You take enough carbohydrates, enough protein, fruit and vegetable. And above all, you must drink enough water every day. At least 200 mils of water in a day. You drink water at interval. You can help yourself by setting an alarm on your phone to remind you to take water. Maybe every one hour. You need sufficient water in your body system to make your skin glow and more healthier. Also, you need regular exercises because it promotes good body system and healthy glowing skin, like, like I've said before. Exercise regularly. You don't have to come out every day to do exercise. You can be in your room, do about 10 minutes exercise. Sometimes in my own case, I do in my bedroom. I do like jogging. I run in my bedroom on a spot. I sweat it out and immediately I have my bed. It promotes good body system and it helps our skin to glow. That is why you see some people's skin are glowing. You may be asking them, which cream are you using? Are you toning? Which stuff are you not? No, they are eating good food, taking enough water, and supporting it with a regular exercise. And lastly, personal items such as clothes, towels, spoon, cups should not be shared 
as it contain it can it can lead to contagious it, it, it is easily that is if you share your clothes or your towel with another person you don't know the infection or the microorganism that is on that person's skin and once you use it you'll be infected too so it is expected of you that you don't share your personal effect your personal belongings with anybody from there we go to the nose this is also a sense organ like i said we have five sense organs we have the skin the nose the hair the tongue and our hair so the next one is the nose the nose is an organ of smell in human being which contains what are called olfactory receptors without this receptor you might find it difficult to smell these are part of the olfactory system and they are used to detect chemicals that are in the gas in the gaseous state. The stimulation of the receptor cells give rise to nerve impulses which travel through the olfactory nerves of the olfactory tube of the brain. Thereafter, the brain interprets the kind of smell it is. That is, before you can understand what a smell of, like I open my food now, maybe it is fried yam and egg. Before you, before you know that, ah, that smells signify fried yam and egg. There are some action that will have taken place in your system from the, from the receptor to the olfactory tube before the action is being transmitted to the brain, which will now interpret the kind of smell. It is when the brain has interpreted the kind of smell, that is when you'll be able to say that, oh, it is fried yam and egg. The nose can be cared for in various ways. That is, what are the ways in which we can care for our nose? One is to maintain a daily NASA clinic with saline solution. What do I mean by saline solution? Just the normal, our ordinary water, and if you like, you can just add just a little drop of salt to make it saline. Then you use your cotton wool, dip it inside, and you can use it to clean your nose. You don't use one for the two nose, you use one, you dispose it, then you take another one, you just clean the second one. That is maintain how to maintain a daily NASA clean, cleansing. Secondly, avoid smoking and second add smoke. That is, you don't smoke, don't smoke cigarettes, don't smoke anything. Avoid it and avoid second hand smoke. What do I mean by second hand smoke? Maybe somebody cooking with firewood or charcoal or maybe smoke from a generator, generating set, set, avoid those second hand smoke. Also avoid carpets to reduce the contact with allergies. It is advisable that most homes that we don't use, the one most of us refer to as rugs, we should avoid it in our living home to reduce the contact of allergy. Because when you are sweeping or you're in the process of trying to clean it, you can see anybody around will be sneezing. That is because the person is having allergy with the contact of the carpet and it is dust. Third, fourthly, let's keep immunity in our home at 55%. That is, our home should not be too cold, should not be too hot. It should be balanced at least 55%. That is why it is advisable that we open our windows for cross ventilations. That is what um, air inside should go out, why fresh air from outside should come in. That is keeping the home humid at 55%. Avoid dust and dusty room. Like I said earlier on, we should avoid dust in our room or in our environment. Don't pluck your nose air. We all know that there are ears inside our nose. We advise not to pluck it, that is, don't remove it. It serves their purposes. Avoid NASA spray. Like we use spray for our armpit or our, our body. Avoid spraying your nose with NASA spray. It can be dangerous to you and to your health and to the organs of your body. Lastly, avoid nose surgeries. Like some people will say, oh, my nose is flat. My nose is like this. I don't like the shape. I want a pointed nose. I want a more, you know, people with their cosmetic surgeries. We advise that we should avoid nose surgery because it can lead to another thing. There are people that are living with problem of 
no still to one surgery or the other. These and many more are the ways we can care for our nose. Let's see the graphical representation of how the NASA area looks like. We have the NASA cavity here, also the oral cavity, the one that almost leads to our mouth. We have the phenax, we have the epiloglids and the linus. Those are the major areas of our nose. Now let's move to the last one, the last revision for today, which is the tongue. Like I said, the tongue is the organ of taste and it contains chemical receptors for different tastes. What do I mean by chemical receptor for different tastes? We have sour taste, we have sweet taste, we have salty taste, and we have the bitter taste. These are called the taste bud, and they cover the upper surface of the tongue. Different areas of our tongue taste different foods. The back of our tongue is sensitive to bitter stimulus or stimuli, while the side of our tongues are sensitive to salty taste and sour taste, while the tea is sensitive to sweet sensation. Somebody gave you a food, a plate of rice with tea on it. Immediately you taste it. For you to know whether that food is tasteless or not, it is the tip of the tongue that, if the food is sweet, it is the tip of your tongue that will tell you, oh, it has taste, it's very sweet. If it is bitter or sour, the, the side will tell you that. If it is salty, there are different parts of the tongue will tell you the chemical receptors of each of the food you are about to taste. We have different factors that affect the taste of our tongue. Temperature of the food that you are going to be tested. Secondly, the state of health of the, the taster, the person that wants to taste the food. How is he or she physically, mentally, and emotionally? The third one is the number of food being shoot at the same time. That can also affect the taste of the, uh, of the tongue by tasting a particular food. Lastly, whether or not the nostrils are closed when chewing the food is also another factor that can affect the taste, tasting of the tongue. We have different factors that can affect taste by the tongue, but these are the few ones for this revision class. How do we care for our tongue? The tongue can be cared for by regular brushing of the tongue. And I will advise you when you are brushing your tongue, please avoid using hard brush because it can inflict injuries on your taste, on your tongue. And when you do that, eating food might be difficult. And aside, aside from eating food might be difficult, the openings where the wound has been created is, is an opening for germs and infections to come in, which can affect the tongue. So the only way you can care for your tongue is by regular brushing or washing of the tongue. And please don't use hard brush in doing so. You can also use what we call bristling borax. You can just put, use a cotton wool, dip it in the bristling wood and use These and many more are the way we can care for our tongue. Please, for our skin, our tongue and nose, we have different diseases that affect them. Sinuses, smell disorder and allergy are part of the diseases that can affect our nose. Why for the tongue? We have tumorous cancer, hypothyroidism, we have Kawasaki disease, we have tongue swelling. It can also be infected by yeast or fungi. And there's another one which is called giantism. That is, you will notice that the tongue is getting bigger or becoming bigger than normal. These and many more are the diseases or disorder that can affect either our skin, nose, and tongue. And with this, we have come to the end of today's revision class. Please, let's use our recommended text, our, our notes that we have written in our exercise notes. 
You can read more on this topic by getting your excellence in biology for junior secondary school by FAK and essential biology for senior secondary school by MC Michael. I'm so glad to be here and I know you are all happy to see me today. See you in next class. God bless you. I miss you all.